Writing. Yes, I love that. Oh, you too. You can keep going back to it. It's excellent advice. But he says, you know, he he says um, to begin with, aim for a thousand words a day, mm -hmm. and then build it up. So I aimed it for two thousand words a day, and sometimes they went down to four, you know, wow. but minimum of two thousand. Because I don't have a job, so, so <laughs> like a if, nine to five or anything. Yeah, so, so that was my your job. job. Was yeah, right. Yeah. So what if you didn't have the inspiration or you didn't know where to go? Didn't what, matter. Did you write I, something else? Or no, I sat there until it came. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I tried. You know, my husband um, warned me, "Don't keep reading back what you wrote when right. you just written." Mm -hmm. So I didn't. And basically, when I re read it over again, I had forgotten things that I planted in the beginning. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> like little plot things, you yeah. know what I mean? That I thought, oh, this big good. <laughs> uh -huh. A little character traits. And then I've gone, when I got to the end, when I read it, it's like, oh my god, I forgot all about that. I gotta, I gotta fit that in somewhere. I did the same thing too, because as I was, I would read back a little bit sometimes, yeah. but I wouldn't, because then you start to get in that revising mode I know, and you start to want to edit. Yeah. So you gotta keep plunging. That's, I think that's really great advice too. So I wasn't really <laughs> reading so much, and I knew that I, I do, I have major problems from the beginning to the end because I set certain rules about this is going to be this way. And then at the end, it was like completely different, you know. <laughs> the characters were all pretty much the same and everything, but I got to go back and, you know, things that I'm referring to and I'm saying, you know, only there, there are only five of this. And then by the end, there's 12 of whatever, you know, so <laughs> things like that. I, you you got to go back and fix, I yeah. figured, ah, fix it later. Yeah, I did kind of a flashback of her being bullied at school. And then it was like, only a few chapters before I'm saying that she doesn't care what other people think and it's like oh mom <laughs> she, she does <laughs> kind of a little bit wow. so it was just little things like that so like, how long do you think you're going to spend doing your revision and editing I don't know before you'll be ready to send it off I don't know see I, I'm I'm new with this. <laughs> Are you going to give it to anybody else to work on? Or do you know, like, any... I wish I knew some no. English teachers or something that no, could... No, I'm not. Because, uh, you know what I mean? It, I don't think somebody else should mess, tinker with it too much. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just maybe give you advice. Say, well, I didn't like this character, or mm -hmm. maybe this character... So you're afraid it'll change what you think? Yeah. My I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't I'm not know. too worried. I wouldn't be too worried about that. I yeah. think, you know, I like getting other people's input and advice because you don't always have to take it. As long as it's yeah, a good friend true. who, who won't mind if you say, well, that's a great idea, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You know, if you have somebody like that who, who can understand if you mm -hmm. say, no, I like mine better. Or because they might come up with something that you go, oh, I totally didn't think about that. Yeah. That's brilliant, you know. My husband has to read it first, though, and he hasn't finished it, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> He's your... What did Steve... Ideal reader. Yeah. <laughs> I am. No, I am. Sorry, I can't... Uh -huh. <laughs> can't yeah. No, but... Yeah. You know, I just made myself... Cause, um, I didn't even plot it out, either. I didn't, I didn't plan it out. No I, outline or anything when you, you just kind of went? Yep. Wow. Well, I had, the, I had the general idea... Right. ...and the characters that I wanted... Mm -hmm. um, and I knew where it where it was going. I mean, I had the whole sort of I don't know what would you call it summary. You know, okay, so yeah. you know, so and so is is uh, you know she's a newspaper reporter and she does this, and then they go over here and you know with this person and yada 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 yada, right? Oh. So I know all that, right? right? But I didn't know, you know, and I had it sort of the a general. Details. Yeah, I didn't mm -hmm. have you know any plot worked out or really you know anything like that. So and. Um, Stephen King said something else too. He said it's like excavating a a scalp, a dinosaur. You remember yeah. that? Uh -huh. Where sometimes you know you get a little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. and you keep digging, you get some more, and that kind of grows. Right. Kind of grows as you go. Did you have like sometimes when I was writing, I would have these characters set, and I would write backstories for my characters and stuff like that, just so I could know who they That's were. That's a good thing to do. And yeah. And they, because then they write themselves, you know, when they're doing their dialogue mm -hmm. or whatever. But yeah. I would have, I'd be going through, and my characters would completely change on me, and they would say things <laughs> that I'm like, I don't, I didn't intend for that, but it works, and it's right yeah. for the story. And yeah. it just, I know. It, that was the coolest thing for me because that was like reading somebody else's book, you know. And yeah. Like, How does this book? <laughs> in my head, I don't know. But then, um, as well, God, um, yeah, because I, I just sit in there and say, so now what, you know? I don't want to bore people to tears with this part of oh, <laughs> there is a great book you should read that I read, and I yeah. loved it. And I caught, the title is what caught me, and it was 
some, I think it was either some artists deserve to starve or some writers deserve to starve. You know, like starving artists. Oh, God. And, I, and I, I was like, oh, I gotta Is read this that. Is this gonna be encouraging? <laughs> it's, it's both. It's okay. encouraging, but it's realistic too. And it's funny. It's so funny. I mean, there's all these great little taglines, and it's, it's a short, like I read it in one sitting. It's just a short little thing okay. about a woman who yeah. wanted to write, and you know, she had her first novel and had all these grand ideas and went into to some seminar or something like that. And uh, another, what? Another, <laughs> another um, publisher, uh, or, or she went in, it was this other author or, or an agent or somebody yeah. who was giving advice, and she had her manuscript, and it was maybe a little worn, and maybe it wasn't quite in the right format, and there were some <laughs> errors in it, but it was a Coffee golden stays. piece. <laughs> yeah, it was a golden piece, and, the, and they, they were going to love it, and, sh and she would write... Um, she would write her great romance novel next or something or t to pay the bills. And, you know, she had all these, and she was talking to the other uh, writer next to her who had the same kind of ideas and, and you know, even grander plans. And then the, they went to this one seminar and they were just all shot down. And it was like, if you know, if you, the first mistake we see, the first spelling mistake, the first grammar mistake, your manuscript goes in the trash because they have hundreds and hundreds to go through. And if you don't have the time to make sure everything is right, yeah. then why should they bother to, to finish it? So it's all these things where it makes sense, but you don't, you know, you think like, well, they'll overlook that because what I've written is brilliant. <laughs> and, and, you know, you got to be prepared and make sure yeah. everything is just right, yeah. you know, it's in the correct format and, yeah. you know, all this kind of stuff. But that's so, why you need an agent. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that really helps. But yeah. she had some great advice on, you know, how to go about finding an agent, yeah. you know, what works, contests and things like that. She seemed to be more of a, um, like... Convention, I don't know what you call them, seminar, or convention oh, yeah. kind of thing. Conferences, right? Yeah, like yeah, like a writing conference. Like she got a lot out of those, going to those and, yeah. and learning and, yeah. and being able to pitch your idea to somebody or, or, right. or whatever. Right. Um, but she was more about, you know, concerts or I mean, concerts, contests. <laughs> <laughs> contests were, were really good. Um, but she said, if you know, if you win them, you lose them. Something great might happen. Something great might not happen. So yeah. it was like, don't don't pay. There are plenty of free ones out there. Yeah, go enter the free ones. Yeah, they don't. say not to pay, don't they? And yeah. they say never to pay an agent. Right, yeah. out of front. You should. Yeah. There shouldn't yeah. be a percentage. Unless it's yeah. like a, something like mailing, like a hundred bucks for mailings and phone calls and Because yeah. there are some out there that charge you money to read your manuscript. Yeah. And that's kind of lame. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? What's your people job? People do it, though. People do it, you know? <laughs> if, if your job isn't reading the manuscript and, and finding a publisher, what, what am I paying? You know, yeah. what are you paying the agent for? Well, yeah. I should imagine that a lot of agents get really tired of reading some really bad manuscripts, of course. Well, no, they're not supposed to charge to read, though. It's a, it's a rule, no. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently. I don't know, if but I've heard that. that um, I've heard in it's in some association or something like that. Mm. Whatever it is for agents. So. Uh, I don't know. Mm. But I've heard that you shouldn't you shouldn't really have to pay up front. It no, be a, it's a commission. Yeah. yeah. And that's why they, they won't go through the, you know, if they read the first however many pages and they're not interested, that, that, then it's gone and they're on to the next one. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think, more the way it's done. So yeah. start your thing off really great. <laughs> Not necessarily a sex scene, but... <laughs> that's what, that's what, uh... Oh, I can't even say Oh, there's name. another great book, too. Um, I think it's called oh. Hook. And it's... I find these all at Barnes & Noble. You know, they've got that great oh. writing section. But it's... And they, you know, for all different kinds of how you want to write, how you want to... Yeah. Whatever. But this one, um, I think it's just Hook. Uh, but it's and it's about... Hook's more style. about short stories. Oh, okay. And the, the opening Hook. line. And how you, you know, put them yeah. in. Yeah. So that I think was really good, just because it had a bunch of examples on these these opening lines that are just brilliant, and they do make you go like, "Wow, I want to, I want to, I want to know what happens next." Yeah. So yeah. that was an interesting, you know, for a short, it's got to be your opening line, and right. maybe for a novel, it's your first page, your first chapter, your first yeah. whatever. It's got to hook them and get them yeah. interested and want to read more. Because mm. a lot of people, I think, want to you want to kind of set things up and, and give your, you know, the whole setting and stuff, but. I think it's better just to jump right in with the action and let the, the rest of the descriptions come yeah, yeah, with yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, huh. I've decided this should be a finger food. What, what is this? It's fruit a cake. Fruit cake. Perhaps a lot of people make fun of fruit cakes, you know. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of fruit cake. Hmm? Okay. I'll, I'll try a little bit though. 
So I'm all about trying. Hmm? <laughs> All right, then. Well, I don't want to be the only one that's not coming. Mm -hmm. Oops. Mm -hmm. They do have a particular flavor. <laughs> I think they're just too... It's very Christmassy. Yeah. I remember my mom My mom makes these sometimes, but it takes forever to make. Mm -hmm. Do they make so these in fun? England? Or? I don't come from England. Well, in Wales. England. <laughs> <laughs> but these Welsh with their... Even with their aluminium and stuff, and they're like, <laughs> they're all about. Oh, but we speak the Queen's English. You see, we speak it right. Can Can you tell me, and from your knowledge of history, how many generations back was it till the royal family was speaking German? I don't give a. The rats <laughs> behind about the royal family. Oh, the origin of England. To tell the honest truth, okay. it's not my mother I've got tongue. You. My mother tongue is Welsh. We, <laughs> We've, established, we've established that. Then don't talk about the queen to me, please. Mm -hmm. Her Majesty. Her Majesty. Not interested, huh? No. Have no interest in, in her. No. Have no interest in Her Majesty. You fought a war to get rid of them, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. That is funny, and it wasn't that long ago. I mean, in the grand scheme of history. I know, I know everything's, oh, Lady Diana is so cool. Mm -hmm. I think, well, hmm. it's hardly democracy, is it? <laughs> Oops. Well, I think in America we have our own royalty too, and it, they're called movie stars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they, they are kind of like, like American royalty, you know? They create around, and there is. We have royalty, there. and we have we have tyrants as well. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you all. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you can't avoid that. I believe we're living under tyranny now. Ah, uh, life is what you make it, right? You gotta True. go with the flow, go roll with the punches. I like that, that little hint of sassafras. I think it made a difference. I tried some of that. After you pour that, Where would you pour some in my fresh? cup too? Sure, is but, this one? Mm -hmm, the great big cup, exactly. Where is How much that one? This big one. one. Oh, oh my god, that is a big the one. The sassafras. Is it in the big one? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was in this one. Stop. Oh, stop it. <laughs> no, it's okay. not in here. Okay. Oh my god. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this one's a big little bugger. Well, that's German Hesse. Okay, it's okay, sit down. Okay, Hesse. Hey, I'm going to check Hesse. my yeah. how my thing is rendering. Be right back. Oh, you are in the other one. Oh, yeah. Are, are you? Oh, no, I'm not in the suite. Oh, well, okay. Mm. Uh, I don't need a suite. Oh, it's <laughs> the <laughs> horror. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is nice. Do you like the hint of sassafras? I do. Okay. Just a hint. Just a hint. Mm, very good. colorful napkins. I know. People bring nice. those. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brightens the day, doesn't mm -hmm. it? These are like paintball. Yeah. Mm. So, um, what are your views on anarchy then? Because I saw something about anarchy here. Oh, oh what's that? Whose script is that? I don't know. I really don't. Oh, my views on anarchy? Well, I know what your views are. Oh. <laughs> Her views. Mine? Mm -hmm. Well, let's hear, it. let's hear your views first, since you're the pro. <laughs> I don't know if, if you know I can I don't know I feel so like we're done I mean I feel like I'm repeating just what I just feel like I would be repeating everything that that people have already said you know uh, would even um, um, Ron Paul is is uh, part of his platform is basically the 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 um, core anarchists uh, theory, which is that uh, along with uh, ultimate freedom comes ultimate responsibility for the that the, the individual mm -hmm. takes responsibility for their own actions. Do you think and, people are mature enough for that? Well, apparently we're not evolved enough for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <coughs> but anarchy has a so we're gonna have to pr we're gonna have to prune our uh, prune. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're gonna have to to prune our genetic tree, if you will, 
every time a branch becomes a tyrant, we'll need to take that those genes out of the gene pool. So. Wow, that's kind of extreme. <laughs> But that's, I guess, the scientific way of... This is, the, this is his views, <laughs> by the way, not necessarily the people who are sitting around the table. Well, there goes my job with the FBI, you know? <laughs> I don't think I can stand to work with the FBI. <laughs> are you kidding. a... I'm not working for the FBI. Are you, are you a... Um, <laughs> and if you were, you couldn't tell us, right? Are you a, are, are you a Welsh agent? Are you a... A double O spy. Yeah, well, I can tell you what, that. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm what, not. What is your What is your nomenclature? What is my buddy buddy? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I think there's there's something to be said for order, but then I think that the sometimes the government tries to do to control more than it should, or you know, there's there's some things to me that that should be. They should be taken care of by communities, by family, by neighbor, you know. But they won't. They will do that. That's the, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, the thing. Yeah. Right. They like, tried that in Britain, care in the community. And, but, mm -hmm. you know, they closed the, the men, some mental institutions down and, you know, let people out in the community, you know, care in the community. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're How still roaming. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Bedlam. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people don't want to know unless it's somebody in your family and even then, you know. Well, things like, like, what do you think about the death penalty? I'm mm -hmm. totally against it. Me myself. Mm -hmm. What about you? Well, obviously not, because you want to prove the genetic... Tree. No, the death... <laughs> the, the death penalty? Absolutely. No, no, no. I don't think that the government should... Barbaric. I don't think that our flawed governmental system should be able to have a life and death, you know, uh, hold over the over the you know that's tyranny of the people. What a horrible tyranny to hold over someone that they could. Mm -hmm. uh, we we can certain suddenly decide that you are worthy of execution. You know, uh, no, certainly not. Great no, no, no. The people as a whole should rise up. And uh, but they're not going to. I know. <laughs> they're not going to. They're they're at work, and then they're gonna um, go home, home and, and watch, watch the tea American party. Idol. I mean, that's mm. what you know what I'm saying. No, 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 Dancing with the Stars. Oh, either way. <laughs> of course, that's the new. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're not really interested because they're because mm -hmm. they're scared of losing their four hundred one k. Hmm. True. And True. health benefits. Well, but, I mean, you know, a, but the fact is means. that they're that they're just they're just as likely to lose their four hundred one k. Either way. By, <laughs> by not doing it. You know Good what I'm point. saying? But they not know that. Pull they your 401k out of the bank now and convert it into real property somehow. Gold. I would no, I would say invest in guns and ammunition and I said gold. I didn't say guns. You hear the G word. <laughs> and, and, uh, oh, it's a but what about, you know, like you think diamonds are worth a lot, but No, they're not. I know. Did you hear, did you see that movie Blood Diamond? Yes. Oh, did oh. You see it? It's called what? Blood, Blood Diamond. Diamond. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's great. I couldn't believe it. Basically, also, diamonds are not that rare. They, oh, they yeah, hold them up in mm -hmm. vaults and bench. vaults. Bench. Yeah. And who knows how many are out there. Mm -hmm. But after you see that movie, man, you oh, don't yeah. want to have a diamond for anything. Mm -hmm. Just because of everything that's anything. attached to it. Mm -hmm. Give me a cubic zirconia. It looks the same. <laughs> I'd rather have a kayak than a ring. A what? A kayak. Yeah, I know. I Something will. you can use. Yeah. <laughs> or do you kayak? Do you go out on the... No, I don't go because I don't have a kayak. But... <laughs> well, I mean, I've been once. Mm. You like it? I love it. Yeah. Apparently. Mm -hmm. I'm sailing. I like sailing. Can you do an Eskimo roll? Oh, hell, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go out by yourself? Don't they, they practice those... I've done one before, but... Have you? I mean, done an Eskimo roll? Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in a in swimming pool, pool mm -hmm. you know, in a lesson kind of environment. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good. With goggles. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's got to be scary, though, to be attached and under the water and you upside would think. down. It's your movement that it, it rolls you up. You know. But were you ever afraid that you are going to get stuck? Oh, I only did it like once. <laughs> 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 No. Yeah, because I don't like having my face in the water. Mm. 
Mm. I must come from Atlantis. <laughs> I'm convinced. Way down mm. below the ocean. You know that song? No. Where I want to be, she may be, she may, she may be. Down, down, down below What's the ocean. Where Is that a musical? I want to be. <laughs> you, you made it up. No, it's a Donovan song, and he starts out, Hail Atlantis, um. way down below the ocean. <laughs> I thought I was going to squirt right over here. Surely you've heard of, of, of uh, Donovan being Welsh and all. <laughs> Yourself being Who's Welsh. Donovan? You've never heard of Donovan? Well, I've heard the word, the name. Really? You've I've not never heard of Jason Donovan. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So, please, enlighten us. Okay, well, he was a singer and a songwriter in the 60s. Yeah. And? And? He, and he wrote that Atlantis song. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and, so, and some several other silly songs and things. And no, thank you. I, I'm a, I got cream in mind. So. You probably have a mixture of all three kinds now, don't you? No, I like to experiment. The little honey and the little... <laughs> <laughs> no, like a little stuff. bit of everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The sassafras really makes the difference, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah. Isn't it, it's not a hallucinogen, just for me to know. <laughs> <laughs> a little effect to make it like rainbow colors. Or I mean, something. it's always good to know if you're hallucinating, if it's drug induced, or you just gone crazy. I mean, I think it's good to know. Okay, the oil of sassafras is 70% saffron. Okay, and if you, and it's the, it, it happens to be if you freeze it, uh, the saffron is the first thing of the three oils that that are in there that crystallizes out. So it's easy to separate the saffron from, from the rest because it'll crystallize out right. at the highest temperature. Right. And you take those out. And then if you take that saffron and treat it to precisely the same process that is used to make Dutch chocolate, it turns it into 3,4-methylene-dioxyamphetamine hydrochloride, or MDA, which is a close relative to MDMA, but one less methyl group. Huh? Ecstasy. Oh, see, I'm so naive. <laughs> and I obviously don't do these things. <laughs> yeah, right. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> MBA, is that like a master's? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, so you can make ecstasy out of that piece of wood. Is that what you're saying? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Good God. It's actually much better than... Than ecstasy. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and I'm assuming it's 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 legal because it, it's a branch grant. Oh no no, wow. that argument fell down a long time ago. Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to Things do that all grow that in the, treatment in to the it. Wild. You can't just chew on the branch. And <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, you'd have to at least like put it in tea or something. You know. <laughs> right. I love you guys. You'd have to. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> We got people at home right now taking notes. What was he saying about that? Wait a minute. Let me put the, let me put the pattern. <laughs> we want you to repeat the process. Apparently, I'm uh, <laughs> missing a fantastic conversation. <laughs> oh, you've decided to join us. Saffron. It's not saffron. It's saffron. No, not saffron. No. Donovan sang about saffron. He, I'm just wild about saffron. Oh, I know that one. Okay. Uh huh. Where's Donovan? Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Not a drop spell. Did you see that skill? That was right beautiful. That was oh. a professional. I've, I've heard about <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard about skills, but until oh, then no. I've only. I can sell that. <laughs> Here, I'll put the pattern. So anyway, on. he wants to know about the uh, the back thing. The what? Hey, what's it? Tell him what he's drinking. Oh, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Am I drinking MDA? Yeah, you did MDA. Have you ever done MDA? No, I've never done MDA. Okay. Uh, I, I like that. It was very specific. So what have you done? <laughs> what are the that you care to share? Mm -hmm. <laughs> look. Yeah, it's still on. Never mind. I look so, like a. Motorhari. 
Matahari. Is that what I'm I'm Matahari. Right. Now I'm, okay, we're getting oh, a call. Oh, how rude. You're the not thing. supposed to do that in a live show. Well, Hello? He answers on me. Hey. <laughs> Oh, oh, here we go. We got Randini. I said maybe Randini would call today. All right. Do you want me to put you up to the microphone? And Wait a minute. Let me put my headphones on. One of the best shows I've ever seen. He actually took a call from a bill collector. Okay. Here, here uh, we go. You want to tell us where, you, where are you at? <laughs> I am in the Padre Islands. The Padre Islands? Yes. Is that off the West Coast? No, that's uh, down in the Gulf of Mexico near. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, let me turn the let me turn the volume up on that mic a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Oh, very good. Oh, wait, oh, I got it. Let me tell you what we're doing. We're drinking we're drinking tea, and I I took the sassafras root and and scraped some of the bark off the sassafras root. We're drinking uh, 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 tea with a little sassafras in it, so we're having a little sassafras tea tonight. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I wish that was there. Uh huh. Well, tell us about now. We are in the what islands? Uh, Padre Islands. Uh, and tell us about them. The, it's as far south as you can go and still be in the United States. Oh, okay. So they're, they're property uh, of the United States, not Mexico. Yeah, no, but, uh, but as I look out in the hotel window here, I can see the Mexican border. It's been so. steeping for a while, I think. Uh-huh. The Mexican it's border is like right there. We can walk over to it. We just show them our driver's license and we can walk into Mexico. <laughs> okay, but can you get back? <laughs> yeah, but just show them our driver's license. We'll be in about a week and a half. <laughs> I can get a kayak out there. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you hear everybody somewhere? talking here at the tea table? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Tell us some of the more high points of your adventures if you like. I t- do what now? Tell us more high points of your adventures. Oh, uh, well, they, they's uh, just coming across Texas and everything and seeing, uh, you know, where Kennedy got shot and, and uh, you know, the, all the controversy there. And, and, of course, every time I see that, I always relive the fact that, that there's no way that the shot came from the uh, library, like they say. You know, it had to have come from, from the train uh, trussle there in front of the... In front of the uh, where you got shot at, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's just no way it came from that from that building. I mean, uh, they can say what they want to, but mm-hmm. back <laughs> back and to the left, right? <laughs> came in for a cup yeah. of tea. I thought, yeah. oh, I need a tea break. Mm-hmm. So, what are you editing now? <laughs> the yeah, same it's just, documentary. It's, just, it's just not a good shot. It, it wouldn't have been a, it wouldn't have been a good well, angle for a shot. This wasn't mm-hmm. good. Is this something? I mean, not not the, uh, where the two bullets went in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still well. <laughs> just never right. They just keep time. talking uh, around here. It is a long time. Long time. Nice. Yeah, I, I well, hear. Sorry, we don't mean to be rude. We can't really hear what you're saying, though. I'm mm-hmm. sure that people can. I can hear. I've had the headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having fun? Oh yeah, we're having loads of fun. It's about uh, 97 here. Water's warm. Uh, it's beautiful. Beautiful, did, sunny. Did you go to Disneyland? Uh, no, we didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we left uh, uh, just before the fire started. We got caught oh. up in a sandstorm uh, in uh, South California <laughs> that killed two people. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And that was a bad, bad sandstorm. You couldn't, you, see you couldn't see five or ten feet in front of you. And were you driving and in that? I was, and there was a massive pileup uh, oh, uh, in front of us, and it killed two people. Mm. So you flying out there first? Um, oh. And they paid to join the ship. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was that was pretty sad for it. Yeah. And, uh, cool. and, we, so and then, of course, we seen another well, wreck happen with a boy. He was going so about 110 down the highway, and he so he crashed in front of us and flipped it's over into a field. I had to stop yeah. and help him. Man, that should be um, Yeah. Um, so six that's some of the sadder mm-hmm. points. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but other than that, uh, it's not been too bad. <laughs> we thoroughly it. I grab my husband and say, come on, we're going. <laughs> we will uh, be sitting. leaving tomorrow, the islands yeah. here. We, we spent the last seven days been, here in the islands. Have you ever been to South Pacific? And yeah. uh, we'll be leaving them tomorrow and heading back home. Yeah. Well, all right. My mother was going to move there. We'll, we'll stay in <laughs> touch and yeah, give, us your, <laughs> give us your report. I will be there next Thursday. I will be live oh, good. on the show. Well, all right. We'll see you next week. All right, man. Be good. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Report in from Points West. I didn't even know that we had islands that were American islands off the uh, Mexico Mexican coast. 
We got properties all over the place. Territories. Yeah. Mm. Whatever. Well, let's see. Well, I have not good enough to be a state, but not bad enough to let him go either. <laughs> not bad enough to let him go. Strategic military points. They're just in, enjoying all the advantages without any responsibility. Actually, it's the other way around. Or as far as we are, or they are. They are. No, what they're getting the shaft. What we take advantage of having them as our territory. Do you um? Like if you look at like the Virgin Islands or um, stuff like that, like they don't get. They don't get state rights. They don't get the federal protection of the federal government unless they're actually physically attacked. Uh -huh. um, so we basically just take the best stuff from them. And then, so they're and then not they a sovereign get, nation. Um, no, I don't know. I'm not sure how that works. Actually, if a they're sovereign a, nation, if they're a territory no, of the, the territory US, territory of the United States. So, so they're, they're not a state. No man's land. Then. Right. They're not a part of America, but then they are, but not officially uh, a state government like yeah. they're only under but federal. it must have their own like the Falklands Island is under the British rule but it has its own right government and mm -hmm. so on well and they so do it's that kind yeah, of okay. thing mm -hmm. I'm sure yeah. they have their own government but too they do. but they totally can. subordinate to America they have everything all the advantages like any of the other islands like it's like in the Virgin Islands you know if they're if they're not claimed if they're independent or whatever they're pretty impoverished but Islands that are claimed by some other bigger nation. Yeah, they get care. a military base. Yeah, Just they, like get all, they get all their mail. <laughs> they get all, you know, whatever. They get benefits from True. from that country that they wouldn't necessarily get if they were on their own. So they do benefit from it. And I right. don't know of any that have been. Recently. I mean, just look at Hawaii. Mm -hmm. But that's they, they a state. get a they get a that is a state. Puerto Rico. Okay, Puerto that's Rico. A, that's a territory. Rico. I'll tell a story. I, I think I've told it before, but. Some years ago, North Carolina came in last on the SATs. Do you know what SATs are? No. No. That was sarcasm. <laughs> that was irony. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Um, so the uh, North Carolina came in last on the SATs, which was very embarrassing to the, to the state. And so they had a big... Um, uh, conference in Raleigh in a big place there and they brought all the teachers in North Carolina together in one big room and they said um, they said we have brought all the educators of the state of North Carolina together uh, to, to discuss this problem that uh, North Carolina has come in last on the SATs and we just want to know if, if anybody has any idea you know of anything that we can do to keep North Carolina from coming in last on the SATs, we want to hear about it. You know, and my cousin Amy Jo jumped up and she was waving her hand Amy and she she hollered. She said, "Make Puerto Rico a state." <laughs> she said, <laughs> oh, "That's mean." <laughs> Amy Jo, you're wow. I, I see, I see, as soon as you were like, "Does anybody have any ideas?" You build a joke very well. I like your your storytelling. That was a good story. That was a good build up. And that's a true story from my cousin named Me Joe. <laughs> Make Puerto Rico a state, she said. I don't know a lot about the education system here in Florida, though. It wasn't that great. I liked either. it pretty. I was. I've done some education in Florida. Well, I had. I went to a lab school, which wasn't a private mm -hmm. school, but it was mm -hmm. separate from the public school system, mm -hmm. affiliated with the university, mm -hmm. and it had no no limits. Basically, mm -hmm. you could take college courses in high school if you wanted. So you could go as far as you want, but they their standards were, were a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, so it attracted, uh, you know, a good list of people that that were wanting to get in. But I had friends that I I started out in public school. And I had these friends that I would have gone to, to their school had I not gotten into this one, this lab school. And they were in all the advanced courses, like everything that they could um, get themselves into to be like uh, at the highest level yeah. that they could get at. And we went to like the same college then, and they thought that they, they were had straight A's, you know, honor students and all that stuff. And they had to take remedial courses because they weren't ready for college level. And when I went to college, it was easier than my high school was. Right, same so here. It depends on the, the mm -hmm. school, you know, but that that was just like, well, that's... Well, college, I was, I was amazed with when I came to college. Uh, I did an exchange year in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And in Britain, it, it basically, you know, you, you have uh, lectures are optional. Mm -hmm. And you have seminars where you get, like, maybe this many people sitting around 
talking about a book in Amchas, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So the British University? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're sitting there and you have a assigned homework and you right. got, and you have roll call when you come right. in. And it's based and on you your comprehension. If you have three, you know. Yeah. It's based <laughs> you, on what your if you comprehension. Don't, if you're not there three times, you, you fail the class yeah. kind of crap. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's I know. It's school, you know I what know. I mean? Because right. sometimes you just don't want to go to class. That's <laughs> right. And That's why right. not? You know, who, who's... Who's it hurting? Just do you, you. Do you like uh, you know, fruitcake? Yeah. You don't yeah. like fruitcake? Yeah. Oh, okay. So when I came to South Carolina, I was just amazed at the little stupid tests. Because we didn't even have exams. You know, what, the first year I didn't have exams. The mm -hmm. second year, right at the end of the year, there were some exams. But, you know, it was usually, you know, you did an S, five essays and whatever. You were on your own. You didn't, you know, they gave you a list of books. No one ever asked you if you'd read them or not. Mm -hmm. There was no one there to ask, you know. <laughs> it's like you read them if you want to pass or right. not. Whatever. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> and then I remember going to a class, right? It was Southern Literature in South Carolina. And uh, no offense to, you know, American education, although I'm going to offend you. <laughs> I, I, went to a, I went to a boarding school for high school, yeah. and it was... Yeah. And, well, no. and it was... It was uh, I was never required to write a term paper to the to the caliber that I in in college that I was required to write in uh, boarding school, mm. much much higher caliber, you know. Well, the thing is, I, I was just amazed at these multiple choice questions. I hadn't had that since I was what eleven. <laughs> elementary or school, you know, or something. yeah, uh -huh. possibly, yeah. And it's like, and, and I don't even think I had them then. <laughs> and it was like this. Oh, it makes it easier for the level. teacher to grade the test. It's right. ridiculous. But what do you learn? It's like th a 300 level course. You learn right? how to take a, you I learn how to cheat a 20 test. 20 years old, right? I'm 20 learn. years old, I'm taking this uh, Southern Literature course, right? And I'm all studying about, you know, imagery and Poe and Edgar Allan Poe and all this, like, Emily Dickinson and stuff, right? And um, me, me and my friend, who's also from Wales, we were joking before the, the test. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> they'll probably ask us his name of his wife or something, right? Did they? First question on the thing, <laughs> the, what was Edgar Allan Poe's wife's name? And I'm just sitting there going, you've got to be joking. <laughs> Do you not know Edgar Allan Poe's wife's name? I said Mrs. Poe, who cares? <laughs> 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 that's like a, that's like a who's buried in Grant's tomb kind of thing, right? <laughs> And it's not Annabelle Lee. That's not wasn't her name. What about Clementine? <laughs> but I mean, who cares what his wife's name was really, right? What does that have to do with the fall of the house of Usher, for God's sake? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I was concentrated on. Right. Like, I didn't give a <laughs> That was just a, an exam to see if you had read the material. See, in, the, the, in the, the introduction, they don't test like, if you understand it. They test if you did it. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. Which is the, that's the difference between. But technically, Mrs. Poe was right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, seriously. I mean, it was. Right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Let me just give you. What if she kept her maiden name? Though? <laughs> or maybe it was hyphenated. What <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, I was surprised by two things that, that I learned in college. Are we running low on this? Oh, probably. If it's the first one I was well, most surprised yeah. with was who they let in. Yeah. <laughs> to college. Some of those yes. jocks. Some of those people with square heads. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah no. And the other thing I was surprised with is who they let out. <laughs> you mean who uh, they graduated? With a degree. It was absolutely, it, it totally opened my eyes to the fact that that is absolutely meaningless. Yeah. That yeah. the whole professional paper on the wall, it means absolutely nothing. It's about whether or not you can afford to pay for access to these things. And right, and you decided that, about. what, when you graduated? <laughs> well, well, yeah, if they, let me, if they let me through, then... then well, it's different. That just blows it's, it, doesn't it? I mean, it's eh, different. The James wide Bob. open, yeah. In Britain, it, it's really hard. Well, it used to be now, it's going, it was really hard to get into university. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You had to go through a lot of hoops. Well, don't, don't run off. I'm just and there's only 10% that okay. went, well, it used to be. <laughs> Well, no, I, have a, I have a serious problem with, with athletics. If you want to get me started on a rant, there's, oh, a, there's a huge one there. Oh, come um, on, sit down. I thought you were a jock. <laughs> yeah, uh, you were a jock all the way through college, weren't uh, you? Nope. Yeah. Look at him. I, was, uh, <laughs> I played soccer in high school, but that hardly qualifies me as a jock. Mm -hmm. um, in Soccer's fact, I was, I, yeah, I was beat up by the other jocks. So, yeah, soccer players, not a lot of respect in Northern Virginia. Um, <laughs> not in America in general. Well, though. certainly. Mm -hmm. But Northern Virginia, the, no, no better than anywhere else for sure. You know, if you didn't wear a baseball hat with a fishing hook on the cap, you know, it's like you weren't, you weren't, you weren't a man. So, I guess I wasn't a man. No, but the main problem I have with, with college athletics, and this 
stemmed from several classmates I had at, at UNCA, um, one of which I won't mention his name, um, but he, he knows was, who he is. He does know. Well, he, yeah. <laughs> he, um, He's watching right a now. A lot of people know who he is, actually, because he, he basically he was a um, um, conservative, Republican, fundamentalist Christian. Which, oh, my God. What was his the, name? My favorite. I'm not going to say his name. It was, it was a lot of fun, though. But he, um, he like kept, a lot of my friends. It was a lot of fun. He kept writing in these these columns to the, the university newspaper. And, like, I was a mass comm major with a concentration in journalism, print journalism. So mm -hmm. I was studying opinion writing. I was studying magazine writing. I was studying journalism. And, you know, there's a certain amount of time that you spend doing those things, um, you know, hitting deadlines, learning AP style, and you see some guy who didn't even pay to go to the school is writing these columns about, you know, how UNCA is liberal this and how it needs to be more like other colleges and how, I mean, it was just a nightmare. And, and every, every week I just got more angry as I read these, and I'm sitting here thinking the whole time, like, you didn't even pay to go to this school. He got a full ride as an athlete. So it's like he's a he's a he's a white male from a privileged family and didn't even pay to go to this university and he's just just spewing this mindless dribble on everyone and there was a point where I was like I can't take it anymore you can't if you put yourself out there like that particularly in print or any sort of media forum you better be ready to get whatever's coming back at you you have voluntarily stepped into the limelight as a public figure not an official but a public figure you put yourself out there you better be ready for what's coming back, and I, you know, I made it my personal mission to destroy this guy, um, <laughs> mentally, philosophically, <laughs> intellectually, in the in the paper, and um, I was actually well, it was it was my last semester, so I was I was heavy into um, rum at that point, um, I had, <laughs> as any good writer um, should. I was, I was having a drinking phase. All my was like my last semester was pretty easy, so you know half a gallon of rum a week wasn't rare. Um, but this actually inspired me to stop drinking enough to, I was like, okay, I got it. This is, whoosh. so I do want to say thank you to um, stupid people everywhere. You inspire the rest of us to uh, behave better, to accomplish the things. Uh, you didn't quit drinking, though. Well, for that time period, I did. Okay, but you're okay now. Oh, yeah, I'm back, back, to, I'm back to normal. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, I was worried for a minute. No, uh, I don't drink rum like I used to, but that's okay. Are you still writing? Yeah, I'm writing a lot. Um, I'm about nine chapters into my first book, so... Oh, no, we just, we just finished <laughs> that big conversation. Yeah.